Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Franchise time is here once again. And for Madden 23, we're heading west to Seattle. It's time for the Seahawks rebuild, and I am very excited to get this series underway. With the trade of Russell Wilson, this team has officially entered rebuild mode. And the goal is obviously to get the Seahawks back to playoff contention and get this team back into those conversations about whether or not they're a dynasty like they were back in the early 2010s. Arizona's only getting better. San Francisco's entering a new era with Trey Lance. And the Rams just came off a Super Bowl victory. And they could very well run the gauntlet again. This roster is still very good. Can't say the same for Seattle, as we're still a very long ways off from even talking about a Super Bowl, maybe even making it to the playoffs. That would be a bit of a stretch. If you're a fan of the Bucks franchise and the Eagles franchise, this is going to be the same type of series. There will be another franchise, because I actually... And really enjoying Madden 23's gameplay this year. So those of you that want a gameplay hands-on franchise, that'll be announced very soon. But Seattle is what we're doing for the rebuild this year. So for last year's franchise, we brought over Ricky Hodges to be the head coach, former Illinois Tech linebacker. And in the honor tradition of keeping those former Wolfpack players the head coaches in our franchises, it's Brent Brown's turn. Seattle ownership wanted to go with a younger offensive guru. The Sean McVay approach seemed to work for the Rams, and they want to copy that formula. So Brent Brown, former wide receiver, whose NFL career as a player didn't pan out very well, went the coaching route, climbed the ladder, and was brought in last second to be the head coach for the Seahawks. Hopefully not just for this year. Hopefully I don't get him fired. So welcome to the 2022 preseason and the new franchise hub for Madden and Madden 23, which I think is a pretty big improvement over last year. A lot more responsive. I just think overall visually it is a much better package, which probably doesn't mean much for a lot of you, but it, it means a lot for me. Preseason this year, we have Pittsburgh, Chicago, Dallas week one, taking on Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. And it's a home game. So Wilson returns to Seattle. That's a pretty big one. San Francisco on the road in week two. Atlanta, Detroit, New Orleans, Arizona, LA, New York, Arizona again. Tampa Bay by week in week 11. We've got Las Vegas, the Rams in week 13. Pretty big matchup. We'll see if we can find a way to keep them from sweeping us this year. Chiefs late in the season, the Jets, and then the Rams in week 18. Pretty fun schedule. I don't know what it's looking like as far as like a strength of schedule grading on like ESPN or something, but I imagine it's a pretty tough schedule. Speaking of San Francisco, D. Bill Samuel is out for the entire season with a dislocated shoulder and the Vikings also losing Eric Kendricks. This is happening a little too often. I don't know if this is going to be patched out i just feel like every time i load up a franchise someone's getting hurt for the entire year and actually never mind it's just a one-week injury for samuel but maurice hurst so i think was already injured is on ir so i think we're getting lied to so he'll be ready to go for the regular season never mind so what does our roster currently look like jamal adams is our top overall player at 91 adams is superstar dev and I'll just say it now, Adams is likely not going to be on this roster at the end of this season, despite having, I think, another year or two under contract. I just think that if we're rebuilding, Adams is a guy that I don't think I'm keeping around, despite being a fairly young player at 26 years old. It's not the worst player to have, but for me, I'd rather move on. Our next two highest overall players are Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, who I was also hoping wasn't going to be extended before the start of the year, before Madden dropped, because then I had the option to potentially trade him, but that's not happening. We then drop all the way down to 84 overall. Quandre Diggs starting free safety. Michael Dixon, our punter. Jordan Brooks is a really, really good player. Brooks, star dev, 24 years old, solid speed, excellent tackler. He is going to be a cornerstone of this defense for a long time. Noah Fan, of course, was part of that Russell Wilson trade. Al Woods, a defensive tackle. Gabe Jackson on the offensive line. Rashad Penny, Shelby Harris, Kenneth Walker, the third. It is going to be so much fun to watch. Kid and Dev player, Michigan State product. Walker was a monster last season for the Spartans. 
and I cannot wait to get him on the field. And I would say he's likely going to be the starting running back at some time during this year. 93 speed, good injury rating. He's got the day one starter tag. I don't see a reason why he shouldn't be starting. And of course, he likes that no income tax, which Washington has. I can't wait to bring in players that want that no income tax because, hey, we've got that. Sidney Jones is our top corner. We've got Justin Coleman on the other side. Will Disley at tight end. Trade target Young. Maybe he gets traded. Darrell Taylor, Charles Cross starting left tackle, the rookie out of Mississippi State. We've also got Jason Myers at kicker. Let's take a look at quarterback. This is going to be a really big focus point for us. Drew Locke is the starter. Another player part of that Russell Wilson trade. Locke entering year four. He's going to be looking for a new contract. And at 66 overall with 89 throw power. It's like below average throwing accuracy. Awareness isn't great. He's not really going to be that down the field elite passer that we may be looking for with players like Tyler Locke and a DK Metcalf. And if we don't like how things are going with Drew Locke, we do have Geno Smith as the backup close and overall. If Locke is not playing well, I don't think Geno Smith is going to give us much of a boost. Their overalls around the same. Their attributes are around the same. It's probably going to be a rough first year at quarterback and maybe a potential rough second year if we don't address it. The way that we probably need to, Jacob Eason is the third stringer. 60 overall. Not a lot of options here. Again, at running back, Rashad Penny, top overall with Chris Carson retiring. Kenneth Walker, the third, I think, is going to get a lot of playing time, if not start somewhere down the line. At receiver, Lockett, Metcalf, Goodwin, Eskridge out of Western Michigan. And then Freddie Swain, Bo Melton, Penny Hart. Don't know much of these guys or much about these guys. Tight end, Noah Fant. We've got some weapons at receiver and at tight end. The big question is his offensive line with Charles Cross, the rookie out of Mississippi State. Star Dev, nice to see. Strength rating, not the best. Pass blocking is pretty good. Run blocking does need work. We'll see if we can actually get these upgrades to go our way because if you remember last year, it was very hard to upgrade pass and run block. We would get the minor ratings for power and finesse, but the other ones did not go as well. Damian Lewis at left guard. Center is Austin Blythe. Both are 72 overalls. Gabe Jackson, the best offensive lineman we have at 31 years old. He's a 78 overall. But how much longer will he be here? And at right tackle is Abraham Lucas, who's a 66 with pretty sub-average ratings. Not really the best option for us. We would likely want to be addressing right tackle as early as possible. Our defense also has a lot of players. Shelby Harris tagged as a bridge player at 31 years old at 77 overall. He could be here for another year or two. Puna Ford, no tag for him, but he's in the same situation, I would think. Defensive tackle, Al Woods, bridge player, plus the mentor role. So Al Woods, if we go to his motivations and tags, he also gives a weekly training XP boost for other players at their position. So maybe addressing defensive tackle is something we want to do as soon as possible. Not even trying to pronounce this name. Nwosu, I think is how that's pronounced, but correct me if I'm wrong. Jordan Brooks, of course, we've already talked about. We're playing a 4-3 defense, so we're only going to see three linebackers and four defensive linemen. Darrell Taylor on the outside as well. And then our corner situation. This could be better. I was hoping that Kobe Bryant would have a better overall starting out, but I don't think this 68 overall is going to scare me from having him on the field a lot more often. 88 speed, 75 zone coverage. I think he's got a lot of upside and he should be playing a lot this first year, even if the overall is not great. I could see him maybe starting the slot, maybe being at number four corner. And then the situation at safety, Quandre Diggs, 29 years old, 84 overall. We've got Marquise Blair. Entering year four, 73 overall. I don't know what I'm doing at safety quite yet because Jamal Adams could be traded. Likely will be traded. It's work in progress. Kicker, Jason Myers, 31 years old. Michael Dixon's 26. He'll be here for a long time with that big time leg. 95 power, 93 accuracy. We might be punting a lot this year anyway. And let's not forget about those draft picks this year. We have two first rounders. We have two second rounders, one coming from Denver each round. We have a third, a fourth, two fifths, another coming from Pittsburgh, and then a sixth round pick. We got a lot of draft capital 
excluding Jamal Adams being traded potential. I keep talking about that. It's likely not going to happen. Take a look at our coaching staff. Brent Brown running the West Coast zone run scheme on offense and the 4-3 cover three scheme on defense. We'll leave that alone for now. Has one talent under the player growth tree, which is the decreased multi-week injury recovery time unlocked, which isn't really the most beneficial thing. But with Brown being a offensive coach, we are going to be working down the offensive upgrades rather than the defensive that we did last year for the Eagles with Ricky Hodges, who was a defensive coach being a linebacker mac williams is our offensive coordinator has a few talents scott jackson actually has five talents already so that's pretty good for the defense which will need help and our player personnel has zero talent currently unlocked one new thing they did add for franchise mode this year is rollover cap from the previous year but we're still dealing with a pretty big 46 million dollar penalty that i think has a lot to do with the Russell Wilson trade. So we currently have 27.9 million cap. If you look at the contracts we have coming up this year, it's a lot of low overall players outside of Justin Coleman and Jason Myers and Puna Ford and Marquise Blair and Marquise Goodwin. But beyond that, I don't think we really have a lot to worry about. Cindy Jones does need a new contract. I don't know how exactly we're going to manage this. We do have a lot of draft picks, so I think we're going to be in great shape. But next year, Noah Fant needs a new deal. Shelby Harris, probably. I don't know at this point. We have to figure out where this team is at its best in what kind of needs to be replaced. And that's going to be a learning process for this roster. So how will this Seahawks roster look after the end of season one? We can see a lot of these players not here. Jamal Adams, I'm going to bring this up again, possibly being traded. Drew Locke, probably not going to be the starting QB. And actually, while I'm looking at this, Drew Locke, what are your traits? Pocket style QB, he does throw the ball away. Average sense of pressure, but aggressive force pass. We could see a lot of interceptions from Drew Locke this year. But at the same time, we could see a lot of jump balls to DK Metcalf, which is what he should be great at hauling in. But that, everybody, is going to do it for this intro episode of the Seahawks franchise. I can't wait to get this one going. I'm kind of waiting to see if we're going to get a patch or if we're waiting for a patch for franchise mode. I think we should be fine to get this going, but I'm not sure what bugs are already existing. I've done some long-term sims. I like where the stats are, so I don't think we're going to have a lot of issues in this series with stats. Just feels good to be able to start this stuff near day one and i have to wait for an update or a patch but i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching have a great day